On an ordinary day in Tokyo, the bustling subway was crammed with commuters eager to reach their workplaces punctually. Amidst the crowd, a young Japanese woman stood up, offering her seat to an elderly gentleman. She couldn't bear to see him standing for the entire journey. Yet, as she recognized the man's identity, an extraordinary occurrence unfolded. As she relinquished her seat to the old man, the security camera captured a remarkable moment. Rina relied on the metro for her daily commute to school, traversing a considerable distance. Thus, securing a seat was not merely a luxury, but a necessity. Upon boarding the subway, she swiftly surveyed her surroundings, noting that all seats were occupied save for one. Knowing that a delay of mere seconds would have deprived her of this opportunity, she hastened to claim the vacant seat, grateful for the chance to unwind before her rigorous day as an art student commenced. With a sigh of relief, Rina dropped her heavy bag to the floor, unaware that her routine journey would soon veer into unexpected territory. As the metro halted at the next station, an elderly gentleman emerged at the tail end of a lengthy coup of passengers. Struggling to navigate through the crowded carriage, he scanned the interior in search of a seat. Despite his evident need, the indifference of fellow commuters was palpable. Witnessing this disregard with a mixture of disbelief and compassion, Rina rose from her seat as the elderly man drew near, relinquishing her coveted spot despite its personal value to her. Here, mister, take a seat, please, she offered. The man looked at her appreciatively and with some struggle managed to sit down. When she offered the old man her seat, he opened his mouth and mumbled something she couldn't understand. So she smiled kindly, saying it was no problem. The man clearly wasn't used to acts of kindness, as his face was full of surprise. Does she know this man? During the ride, Rina occasionally checked on the old man by looking over her shoulder. And every time she would do this, he was already looking at her. How odd. Did they know each other? Was that why the man behaved so oddly? Did she forget something? No, that couldn't be. The old man kept staring at her during the remainder of the ride. At first, Rina didn't mind and just ignored it thinking he would eventually stop. But he didn't. What is he doing? Rena mumbled under her breath. But she couldn't stand by. When the metro stopped at the station, the old man wanted to get off. But he struggled immensely to get up and leave the train. So Rena pushed her feelings aside and helped the old man once again. Once outside, the man thanked her heartily and wished her a good day. Then Rena returned to the metro. What a start to the day, Rena mumbled with a smile. Not much later, she arrived at her own stop and got off. Then she suddenly realized her bag. She ran back onto the train to grab her backpack. Inside, with relief when she grabbed it, then something else caught attention on the seat she gave the older man, an envelope. Confused, she grabbed it off the chair and saw there was no writing on the outside. The old man probably forgot it. She looked around while thinking about what to do. She couldn't just go back, so she pocketed it. Farina stepped out of the metro and started walking toward her school. She placed the envelope in the front pocket of her bag and would try to track down the old man in her free time. She thought the envelope probably belonged to him, not knowing where this would eventually lead her. On her way to school, her thoughts kept returning to the envelope. What would be in it? Should she take a look? She shook her head. You shouldn't look into someone's privacy, but maybe it would help her find them. Her thoughts went back and forth, and then she arrived at school, changing everything. Rena set foot on the school grounds when she noticed a group of girls running toward her. Rena, you're on TV. One of them shouted. Rena was bewildered. She was on TV. But before she could ask, she got dragged into an empty classroom where one of the girls showed her the footage. Shocking. The footage showed a subway compartment, which Rina immediately recognized. It was the one she was in just moments ago. The video showed security footage where an old man got out of the metro with a girl's help. After this, the video cut to the old man who said something unbelievable. I accidentally left a very, very important envelope on the subway, and I really need to get it back, the old man said. When Rena heard this, her hand instinctively moved to the front of her bag. Her thoughts were right. He did leave the envelope there. But the video wasn't over yet. The video cut back to the security footage showing Rena picking up the envelope. Then the man returned on the screen looking desperate. Please reach out to me, he said. Without hesitation, Rena started to run toward the subway. She'd seen at which station the man was. It was just one stop from the station closest to her school. So maybe the man was still there. When Rena sat down in the metro, she checked the front pocket of her bag, making sure the envelope was still there. To her surprise, she noticed the envelope wasn't sealed. She saw what was inside. What? Rena said loudly as her eyes grew wide. Inside the envelope was a big, intricately designed key. She frowned, wondering what the key would lead to. It looked valuable, so Rena could understand why it was important for the old man. She was happy to see she was almost at the right station. Moments later, the metro came to a halt in the station she saw in the footage. Okay, what now? Rena mumbled. It was quite a big station as it had six platforms. 
Would the old man still be here? And if he was, where would he be? Yeah, she started to run over a platform. Rena's heartbeat increased from all the running, and she started panting. But then she saw him. The old man was sitting on a bench on the other side of the station. She rushed toward him. Excuse me, Rena said, you left this envelope on the train, and I wanted to return it. The old man looked up, his eyes widening in surprise. Thank you, young lady, he said, his voice filled with gratitude. I can't thank you enough. In the envelope, this key is very special to me, the man continued. It has been in my family for generations, and I was worried I'd lost it forever. Rena smiled at the man, happy to have been able to help. I'm just glad I could return it, she said. The old man smiled and told her she reminded him of his granddaughter, always ready to help. Just like you, Rena smiled and said it wasn't a problem. And then something incredible happened. Her curiosity gained the upper hand as the questions blurted out. What does the key open? She slapped her hands in front of her mouth in surprise, but the old man just smiled. I can show you if you like, he said. Rena agreed in an instant, not knowing how it would turn out. Rena was surprised the old man invited her to come with him. Why would he invite someone with him to something that was so important to him? The more she thought about it, the weirder it got, and she started to worry a little. But the old man couldn't harm her, right? To get rid of some of her worries, Rena started to ask the old man some questions, and to her surprise, he was very open. Her worrisome thoughts instantly vanished as the man explained that the key belonged to a bank vault containing his family heirloom. He would love to show it to her. Rena hesitated for a moment, but then agreed to come. They boarded the subway train and rode silently, the old man clutching a small bag close to his chest. She realized the old man was clutching the key for dear life. When they exited the station, he led Rena through a maze to the bank. The old man greeted the bank manager with a nod, and they were led down a hallway and into a room with a large vault. Once the manager left, the old man fumbled with the key and eventually opened the vault with a loud click. When the heavy vault door swung open, Rena gasped. The vault was filled with objects made of gold, precious stones, and boxes, but what caught her attention was a small, beautiful Japanese statue sitting on a pedestal in the corner. The old man saw Rena looking at the figure and did something unbelievable. He lifted it off the perch and gave it to her. This is for you to show my gratitude, the man said. Rena was taken aback. She only did what she thought was right. She didn't deserve this. Rena shook her head, not accepting the gift, but the old man insisted on it. Without you, I would never have been able to get back here, he explained. A wave of gratitude engulfed Rena as she contemplated the statue before her. Though aware of its considerable monetary worth, she recognized its true value lay in the act of kindness that had brought it into her possession. Rena couldn't shake the feeling of connection with the old man. They shared a bond, unaware that their paths would cross again. Driven by curiosity, Rena sought to understand more about the statue's significance. Having never owned anything like it before, she was determined to care for it properly. Months later, she entrusted the statue to an appraiser eager to uncover its history and value. The appraiser's revelations left Rena astonished. The statue crafted by a renowned artist during the Edo period was valued at over $110,000. Overwhelmed by its worth and historical significance, Rena reflected on her decision to return the old man's key on the subway with pride. As she journeyed home, she pondered the statue's rich history and its connection to the old man's family across generations. She felt deeply honored to be its custodian, pledging to cherish and safeguard it always priceless possession she could never part with.